But because everybody eats sugar is the party line, because of course you have to have a, a dessert every once in a while is the party line, because there's not a person on the planet apparently who'd be able to resist junk food, because that's the party line. These influencers are not silenced, and their channels are still on Instagram, still on TikTok, and yes, I found some of these people on YouTube. All right, all right, all right. Carnivore Soldier coming at you from Austin, Texas this morning. Today we're going to talk about what it will take to get this diet recognized as a proper human diet by governments, hospitals, medical community, all the major players. We know that industries that create food and medications probably won't be so interested in this, but anyone that's a truth seeker in the government or in the medical community definitely will. We've already seen a lot of that happening. So what's it going to take? I have talked about in the past that everyone can get in the fight. You can either become a content creator, which I recommend if you can. Uh, but if you're not interested or do not have the skills or the capability to do it, then you can become a viewer. And by liking, subscribing, et cetera, you can drive the algorithm. That apparently is not enough. It's not going to be enough to get this done. You can't just, we, we still need you to like, subscribe, and comment on videos, but that's, that alone won't get the job done because YouTube has apparently gone down the road of shadow censorship with um, anything that doesn't line up with the World Health Organization's dietary guidelines. So we see all these doctors being banned. Anyway, I, I'm not going to talk much about it. I'm going to talk about how we can stay in the fight and how we still can do the fight. But first, let's talk, let's take a look at a video I found that I think will explain what, what we're talking about here. Okay. So let's go ahead and play her video and listen in. I'll comment as we go. And then at the end, I'll tell you what I think we can do to continue the fight and to continue to, to grow this thing at the grassroots level. I'm a big fan of Dr. Berg. So when he mentioned in a recent video that he believed his videos were not showing up in search. I tested the theory because I was curious and his videos are not showing up in search. But I also noticed that neither are Dr. Eckberg, Dr. Barry, Dr. Sivis, Dr. Fung, or any of the health experts that I originally found teaching about keto. Dr. Westman wasn't there either. So who did I see? I saw mostly people who either had limited experience with keto and we're kind of saying eh, it works but it's not worth it or people who are actively saying keto isn't healthy now doctor now you can just replace keto with carnivore it's the same principle obviously it's just a diet that's not recognized by the it's not a plant-based diet which is what the world health organization recognizes as the healthy the only healthy diet <laughs> dr berg pointed out that the reason he felt his videos were no longer showing up was because of this rule about misinformation. And apparently they're defining misinformation as anyone giving any kind of health advice that goes against what the World Health Organization deems as appropriate health advice. And that's the reason I'm making this video say. So we've seen this before in history play out many times with science. And you can go back to Copernicus and Galileo when they proposed that the Earth was not the center of the galaxy, but that the Earth actually orbited around the sun. And they backed it up with facts and math. And of course, they were persecuted because all the leading scientific organizations and government organizations did not recognize this. They recognized only, they, they considered that misinformation because the settled science all pointed towards the earth being the center of the galaxy and the universe. So th this is not new. It's, and we're going to have the same kind of battle that Galileo and Copernicus went uphill against. So anyway, let's just continue watching this. So I wanted to talk about my frustration that channels are being marginalized because we're talking about how we were able to do keto and lose large amounts of weight. We were able to do keto and solve medical issues. 
and even channels that are from doctors that are talking about the amazing results that they see in their clinical practice, amazing results that they're seeing in the research that they're reading about and they're sharing it with us, that these doctors are also being marginalized because they're not supporting what the World Health Organization says is a proper diet. Dr. Berg is tapping into something that I think is even bigger than what he spoke about. Give yourself a test to see if you really believe the things you say they be you believe, whether they be things about the Bible or things about anything else, things culturally, things political correctness, whatever, whatever you want to believe. Give yourself this test. Ask yourself this question about the things you claim to believe. Can you believe it by yourself? I don't need you to believe that Jesus is the Savior. Believe it or don't believe it. That's between you and God. Because if you can believe something, you can believe it all by yourself. And if you have to recruit other people and force them to go along with you, it's because you know it ain't true in the first place. With the recent news that companies have been paying influencers to get online and talk to us about how safe it is to have aspartame in our diet and that the World Health Organization and, and the people talking about what the World Health Organization is talking about, they're crazy. They're, they are fear-mongering, according to these influencers, because safety of aspartame, that's the hashtag that's going around. I want us to understand that the fact that PepsiCo and Coca-Cola, who are represented by American Beverage, who is the one who paid these influencers to talk about aspartame safety. The fact that some of these influencers are paid by the Canadian Sugar Institute, of course, who represent Canadian sugar companies. Again, something to worry about. The fact that Carlson Labs, a supplement company, was caught paying off influencers so that they would market to parents with young children a product that the FDA said should not be given to young children is something to worry about. We have deck. It's absolutely factual stuff. So YouTube, because that those paid advertisements or influencers are being paid by those industries to toe the line, it's not uh, banned. It's considered not misinformation that sugar is okay for you and aspartame's healthy. These kind of things that we know, you know, we know that's not necessarily factual so it's kind of disturbing that those people get a pass because they're not going against a plant-based diet but anyone that's ketogenic or carnivore is going to take the hit and you're just not going to show up in search even if you all like subscribe and comment on the videos they may not be served up so i'm very thankful that my videos from dante F F uh, fregno was sh served up because this had not taken place yet. But who knows how many people out there are not seeing our videos because they, they're no longer being served these videos. They're being served other videos. So this is what the conundrum is. Yeah, you do need to like and subscribe. Videos that are liked and subscribed and have comments do better. A video that's got a lot of likes and subscribes would be more likely to be watched because it's considered to have valuable content. So that's for sure what you can do. But in addition to this, you need to start sharing videos and there's a share button at the bottom of YouTube where you can get the link and you need to post it on Instagram, on TikTok, on Twitter, on Facebook. When you can try to post, if you see a good video, like, subscribe, comment, and then share it. And you're, you're going to have to manually drive it because the algorithm is biased at, towards world health organization, not towards what we know to be a really healthy diet. Let's keep going with this decades worth of evidence that junk food, first of all, causes weight gain. We have decades worth of evidence that high sugar foods lead to weight gain. I'm talking about junk food again. We have evidence that processed foods, again, junk food, lead to weight gain. Somehow. You know, I'd like to jump in there, though. So when she talks about junk food, people consider junk food to be candy bars, that kind of stuff. But really, we talk about uh, sugars. You can talk about too much fruit as full of sugar. You can talk about protein bars, protein powders, junk. These are junk food because they're man-made processed foods. Almost everything in the middle of the grocery store can be considered junk food, pretty much. You know, be careful. Uh, when she's talking about junk food, a lot of people just go, oh, it's cookies and it's Oreos. And yes, that is junk food, but it extends out to healthy food with hidden sugars, yogurts with hidden sugars. They, they hide sugars in everything now. You go to... Uh, Get a smoothie that's full of sugar. A fruit smoothie, terrible. That's like junk food too. So these junk foods are everywhere. 
That's why it's so important to look at ingredients and drive your decision making with what you actually read. And if you don't understand what's in a, in a product and it's got more than four ingredients, you probably should walk away or do some research before you put that in your mouth. Companies can pay influencers to promote junk food, can to promote high sugar foods, can to promote even aspartame on the heels of the World Health Organization saying it should not be. And we in the keto community are the ones being censored for misinformation, but because everybody eats sugar is the party line, because of course you have to have a, a dessert every once in a while is the party line, because there's not a person on the planet apparently who'd be able to resist junk food because that's the party line. These influencers are not silenced and their channels are still on Instagram, still on TikTok. And yes, I found some of these people on YouTube. I want to point out that videos made by doctors, made by regular people like myself that talk about how we were able to lose a lot of weight, 70 pounds, that talk about how we were able to get off medication, that talk about how we were able to regulate our, our, our health issues with food are seen as misinformation, are seen as leading people on the wrong path, even though we make no money or no extra money by saying our story. The only way that I make anything is because you guys watch my videos. But beyond that, not paid by anybody yet. People who are paid by companies to lie are not being censored. There's a huge discrepancy. If you want to promote health and you have nothing to sell and you're talking about something that's healthier, than the mainstream, you're being censored. Yep. If you're talking about anything that's holistic and doesn't need medication, you're censored. Do we really believe that this is only the World Health Organization that's pushing this agenda? Why are we not censoring people who are actively paid to say things that's against our better health? We need to be very careful because if this continues, our young people are being pushed in the wrong direction because targeting TikTok, targeting Instagram, targeting shorts and, and all the different things that they're targeting on YouTube, they're aiming at our young people because they're the next generation of people coming along who will be buying those products and they're going to they're gonna eat them believing that this is healthy, number one, but they're also going to teach their children to eat them. If we don't see that that's what they're doing and intervene, the next generation is going to be even more metabolically damaged than we are. If you agree that the lies that say that sugar and aspartame are harmless need to be stopped, you need to share this video because if you don't. Okay, guys. So there you go. See, share the video. And this is the thing. You're going to have to start sharing the video because if you don't, it'll get censored out where it just doesn't show up on search like it should. So sharing videos, you can share this video, you can share other videos, definitely do your part. And if you want to get in the fight and you're not going to be a content creator, then support content creators by liking, subscribing and sharing their videos. If they're, if they're worthy of sharing, if you think that's a good video and you think other people should see it, share it to friends, family, share it to Facebook groups, Facebook pages, Instagram, TikTok, wherever you can think of Twitter. Twitter is a great place to share videos and recommend them, you know, say, Hey, this is a good video. This is interesting. And that's how we're going to drive more people to the message. We're gonna have to manually do it. And when she talks about the keto community too. So just to clarify, carnivore is a ketogenic diet. We are part of the keto community. We are a more strict and I think more effective version after doing both. I've done both diets. The carnivore diet is highly effective much easier to do than the keto diet as well. It's the simplest form of a ketogenic diet, I believe out there. And so anyway, that's all I got guys. So this is a great video. I recommend you like and subscribe uh, if you like this kind of content and go ahead and start sharing these videos and go back and share some of the other ones that you found value in for sure. If your friends are asking about how to start a carnivore diet, I have a playlist you can share getting started. If you share some of those video movie reviews I've done, you can share a lot of videos and you just get the stuff out there where people will start coming 
I don't know if this YouTube thing with the World Health Organization is a permanent situation or not, but in the meantime, we know it is affecting searches. You can just search for carnivore and you don't see any of the doctors pop up. Really, Dr. Saladino, I think is the only one. And from a carnivore point of view, he's kind of carnivore. He's carnivore-ish. He's animal-based, I guess, what you'd call him. But you don't really see the true carnivores on there. Same with keto. You're not seeing the keto doctors on there. You're seeing a lot of, you know, this is dangerous for you kind of videos. So it's very interesting. Anyway, that's all I got today. All I got to say is stay strong and overcome. Carnivore Soldier, out.